I do not think I'll have time to record the whole game, but I thought I'd try to catch a little of Delial vs. Chickeny. This is an incredibly important uh, match in Clan League. If Delial can get at least a tie, he locks up an excellent result for AVL, who will win the second half of Clan League. However, if Chickeny can grab a win, it is all up in the air again. That doesn't mean Brotherhood of Seed will be able to catch up, but they will certainly have a chance to. And so this is a, a huge matchup. Um, Delial needing a tie, Chick needy needing a win. I think both players here have been playing really well of recent. Chickeny has been wrecking Survivor, we can bring that up. And Delial's been performing really well in a whole variety of things. Um, one of which, the one that uh, people are probably going to be less familiar with, is um, he played a set of five games against the uh, the best random playing of my, my AIs, and uh, potentially spoilers on a later video, but um, he is doing very well in that match. Um, he is definitely not behind. Um, and if we look at Chickeny, Chickeny has six wins, three ties, and one loss in Survivor, is one of the last three players left, and has some really big wins on the way. Um, and I think that, yeah, that doesn't even include the latest game where he beat Piggy Man, giving Piggy Man his first loss of the tournament. So Chickeny's been wrecking people, and wrecking people with really high win rates. Okay, Dully goes for a side starter. Now, I tend to be fundamentally skeptical here, but one, he finds a way to get the weakest card out of his hand. Two, it is well, fairly well supported by Cypher, but three, and I think most important, his 9439 has anything Chickeny is facing down beat. So this would definitely count as an aggressive side, right? It's, I think, because I think the most important thing it's doing is saying you don't have safety in one or three. And if we look at Chickeny's hand, we see he has an A left that beats anything in Dully's hand. A 9 up, that doesn't beat anything, but Dully would be committed to using the best card in his hand. A 7 to the right, and an 8 down. And so it clearly has a down and right weakness, so if we look at the actual cards, does the weakness matter? You know, 9, 4, 3, 9, and 9 is actually pretty well covered. Um, and it may land there at some point, but at least Chickeny hits it pretty well from 6, and maybe can set up to hit it from 8, though I notice he has 3 cards with the same left and right, and when you have that kind of redundancy in gaps between left and right, it can be a lot harder to set something up, right? Because all of them would need a 9 to the right if Chickeny, if Deli was to start 9 and Chickeny was to go in 7. And if you don't have it, that's three cards that can't possibly have a plus. Um, Arania would need a six, which also isn't the case. And Omega Weapon would need Arania exactly to land in seven. And it might be kind of risky to tie up your two best cards that early. So nine more, four, three, nine, and nine could have some play and might have been an okay starter. Though tying it up early also, of course, comes with costs. But... What I think is interesting here, and one of something that kind of differentiates defensive versus aggressive players, is a defensive-minded player might say, okay, you have a weakness to the down, down right, how can I shape the game accordingly? And that may have been Dully's first instinct, and it may have just been he didn't have a card to put there. You know, 8813, that's covered by 5464, four. Eh, not really clear there's something to put there. You know, so... But what I think a more aggressive-minded player will think in positions like this is controlling space on the board rather than kind of controlling the cards that are on the board, right? And what Delhi is doing here is limiting where Chickeny could go, right? Not limiting... Not necessarily trying to create as much as try to limit. Um, but he is both a good recapture and good coverage. And we should check if it's actually good coverage. I was just sort of assuming. I noticed the three down couldn't be plus or same walled. The four to the right on the nine, four, three, nine, there's no plus in five. And the nine to the left, if it goes in six, there's also no plus in five. Now, 
And also, uh, with that six facing down, Cypher will always have a same threat in five, right? If Deli does go like nine, four, three, nine, and four, he will always be able to play something like Cypher in five at some point. And actually, Deli's hand is cleverly put together because if Cypher ever lands in five, four, five, four, six has recaptures in both six and eight. And if needed a recapture in four, though a less cute one. So Deli actually showing some really nice synergies with this hand um, that we can see. Now, from Chickeny's point of view, I was thinking maybe you just walk into it. Um, for instance, if you play something like, let's just force the action, actually commit our best cards. Let's try this. One, seven, eight, nine, and three. I think it's pretty hard for Deli not to go in six. One is probably fine, but given that the card in two is weak to five, you really have to calculate a bunch of things. Let's, let's say Deli goes in six and Chickeny goes Arania in nine. Now... Either Chickeny's going to get two safe cards and a third safe card soon when he plays 7565 five in five, or potentially third. Maybe he can't go there because Cypher covers it. So maybe Deli can hold on to Cypher and have some play there. But I wonder if forcing the action, just forcing the capture, saying I get Arania safely in nine, I have threats in five, your only recapture in five gets your best card out of your hand. But this is a bad idea, because I didn't realize uh, I've made the game two rightwards, and I don't even have a recapture in one there. Um, and I would need a capture in one to make that kind of line work. So okay, don't think should force the action. My next instinct would be probably play some kind of far corner. Um, you could also take with a weaker card, say 3-4-4-4, four, 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 I want that out of my hand, play that in three. Um, and then you have some clever points if we kind of do the same line, 3, 4, 4, 4, and 3. Now, the problem is it doesn't necessarily draw out 9, 4, 3, 9. But say 9, 4, 3, 9, and 6, Arania in 9, Cypher in 5. Now, Omega Weapon in 1 is safe, and I suspect Chickeny has a pretty good position there. Um, so I could, see, I could see 3 being a decent option. I'm not sure why I'm so much more... I, I do know why I'm more drawn to 3 than 1 because I specifically, if captured, have a follow-up in 9. Um, it's that Arania looks to me like she could be safe someday. Um, I think more likely is some card, maybe 5464 four, dropped in 7, or something like that. Looks like a move that can't really be bad. Um, gets a card out of the hand that's easy to recapture, but at least hard for one of Dully's cards to capture. Uh, he does pick up 5, 4, 6, 4. It could go other squares. Just 7 was the one that sort of popped out to me. You want the game to be a little more leftward, right? 9 is a square we've seen Chicken he can use. Ah, he does go for the capture. So these were the kind of two ideas we looked at here. Now, this does force the action, but Delhi is now given multiple ways to take if they want, if he wants. Um... And there is still the point that 7565 has trouble landing in 5 due to Cypher in 4. So we have 9439 and 6, that's a move. And I think it would be hard to lose after that move. Unless there's a big setup in 8 or something, but I don't see it. So I think 6 there is appealing, but we have a new option 8813 and 6. You know, Chickeny held on to his better cards. Um, but this, in turn, gives an opportunity to Delhi. And for instance, if 8813 lands in 6, then 9439 has a double recap in 5. He could use Cypher, but he gets a second option, which can keep Cypher in his hand, which stops things like Omega Weapon landing in 1 safely. Um, so I would be really tempted to look at 8813. That's, that's the move that jumps out as very appealing to me. There is no immediate combo. There is no move in eight that sets up a threat in five. Again, Chickeny's cards having some redundancies. You know, one, seven, eight, nine, and seven, five, six, five, both having the same gap between right and down, I think makes some lines a little tricky. I think it makes it... His hand has some plus wall potential, 
but it has less same and plus potential than your average hand would, simply because it is doing redundant things, so it can only set up against specific numbers. And there is a question of, can Dully take advantage of that? No idea. Uh, but 8813 in 6 looks quite appealing to me. Um, if Chickeny goes in 5, you likely have safe options in both 1 and 9. Um, for instance, 3444 in 5 covers Cypher in 1, but does not cover 9, right? And I think you're quite likely to have at least one of those options be very powerful if Chickeny goes 5. You also potentially could just go 7 with 4546, but not sure which way you want to do it. Um, but I would suspect you take one of the corners immediately. I don't think um, Deli's cards are good enough sweepers to uh, to go for the Q. That's my guess. Um, we're, we're looking at this pretty far out. So 8, 8, 1, 3, and 6. It's hard to play Omega in 1 just because it's so vulnerable to combo. And I don't think Deli has to take the combo immediately. For instance, if Omega in 1, let's say Deli just went 4, 5, 4, 6, and 9. He now has still this huge threat in 4 that Chickenies probably has to block. And then Deli blocks 5 with Cypher and has 9, 4, 3, 9, which is pretty good at the end because it's going to take whatever's in 4 if that hasn't been flipped already. And has some coverage of a uh, chickenese hand. So I think, what else could chickeny put in one? Well, chickeny doesn't need to capture a card in two. So if Dudley goes six and chickeny plays one, hmm. The thing is, if it's weak to two, then the fact that Delhi has still a plus in two with Cypher, or five with Cypher, can be a little scary, depending on the exact move order. I think this is pretty promising for Delhi. I think he should not lose it and has some chance to win. I think 8, 8, 1, 3, and 6 is pretty good. I think 9, 4, 3, 9, and 6 is also probably fine, but I would rather use 8, 8, 1, 3. I think it's a little dead in this matchup. Um, the double numbers are never really flipping anything. The 8s aren't overpowering much. You know, Cypher 6 facing up actually overpowers a little more reliably than its 8, or at least overpowers a more important target in 1, 7, 8, 9. I think a more important target. Um... So I think 8, 8, 1, 3, and 6, I would guess, is a tie, but I think Chickeny has to be careful there. Is it fair game to pop open the solver here? Should I wait? I should probably wait. But I like the spot for Delhi. Um, I guess what we'll do is I have to leave in um, 15 minutes. So if the game is not over in about... 10 minutes, I'll do a quick solver check and then run off. Um, just out of curiosity, all rules are in play. It does look pleasant to me. I think this was a good side starter. I think fundamentally the most important thing a side starter can do is not give the opponent the squares next to it. Um, I convinced myself with my starter series that the focus on kind of defensive sides is misplaced, um, the kind of version people do. All right, so Delhi does go with 8, 8, 1, 3, and 6. And now that he's moved, I feel much more comfortable opening up the solver because there's a lot less of the game to be played. I think basically the question is, did Chickeny find a path here? You know... 7, 5, 6, 5, and 1. 9, 7, 1, A, and 9. Potentially something in 5, 4, 8, or 7, though those seem unlikely. I still... My sort of idea with going in 3 was to follow up with 9, 7, 1, A, and 9. So that's still the line I consider kind of critical. Um, but it feels like Delhi can play 9, 4, 3, 9, and 5 there. He takes a 6-4 lead, 
and Cypher is so powerful. Notice that once 9439 is in 5, because Cypher's ha uh, Deli's hand really has synergies down. Once 9439 lands in 5, Cypher actually just dominates. It can now even take a 6 facing down. Um, so, you know, after that, if Chickeny goes in 8, Chickeny goes in 8, I was thinking 4, 5, 4, 6, and 7. But I guess if Chickeny plays exactly 7, 5, 6, 5, and 8, Ah, uh, but that's called combo vulnerable. So then Deli plays four, five, four, six, and one, and he wins immediately. And if you go three, four, 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 and eight, Deli can take with four, five, four, six, or one, seven, eight, nine, and eight. Anything Deli can take with four, five, four, six, he just wins against. If anything goes in two, uh, sorry, in one, it just gets comboed by Deli or taken by Deli. Deli's up seven, three. That's just a win. So I think Arania and 9 is losing. I think that just loses. And I think... I think Deli did a really nice job building the hand here. There's a number of lines we've looked at where Deli found cool synergies. And there's kind of none where Chickeny's hand did. And I think Chickeny is a marvelous player, I should say. I think... Um, I think he's playing awesome. He's been just destroying people in Survivor, winning at such a high rate. And I think he plays fantastically. My sense is his weakest element is his hand holding. But obviously, he's just a tremendously deadly tournament player. Um, but I think this is dangerous. And I think most of the danger is due to his hand not giving him great tools. So, okay, the main op op uh, alternative to 9 is to go in 1. 1, 7, 8, 9, and 1 might work, but god, that's a nightmare to play. Like, you know, sometimes that goes in 1, Cypher combos, say, in 4, and you have Arania in 5, and it just turns out that's a tie. But I kind of doubt it here. It puts you up 6, 4, but after uh, 4, 5, 4, 6, and 7, you, you're, you're definitely losing. So I, I really doubt there's a tie there. That looks horrible. I mean, obviously, it's a terrible looking move. So 7, 5, 6, 5, and 1 is where I'd be looking. But again, I kind of think 9, 4, 3, 9, and 5 looks just really good. Creates a threat in 4. Um, Deli leads 6, 4. If at that point, Arania goes in 9, then 4, 5, 4, 6 goes in 8, and that's going to win. Yeah, that's definitely a win. And so you probably have to block four, but what do you block four with? What do you block four with? Nothing takes five, so Deli's going to be up six, four, and Deli's going to play... So I guess the goal is, yeah, try to have Arania land in eight. That if Deli goes like four, five, four, six, and nine, you have Arania eight, and that does tie does tie. So maybe 7, 5, 6, 5, and 1 just barely works. 1 can also be met by 9, though. 4, 5, 4, 6, and 9 keeps more power cards in Deli's hand. But again, Arania landing in 8 at some critical moment seems plausible. For instance, 3, 4, 4, 4, and 4 if Deli plays 9, 4, 3, 9, and 5, then Arania 8 ties. But Deli has Cypher 5, and then... I've lost track of the count. I feel like that wins, but I'm not sure. I think this is a weird position. I'm going to start putting the, uh, the cards in. Um, so Deli first turn had 2, 3, 6, 5... 4, 5, 4, 6, 8, 8, 1, 3, 9, 4, 3, 9, 6, 9, 8, 4, just going from lowest to highest level. Oops, didn't mean to open this. No, quit. Um, and Chickeny's hand, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 6, 4, 7, 5, 6, 5. 
1789 and 971A. And also really interesting that Delhi got what I think is a clear advantage out of um, out of one of these aggressive side starters that, you know, he saw Chickeny's hand as a weakness up, as a weakness going down, but he didn't take that as a sign to play low, he took that as a sign to play high, right? He didn't take that as a sign to build safe things himself or hard to take stuff, he took that as a sign to make it hard for Chickeny to play safe stuff. And that's a really cool instinct that Delhi has very strongly and very well. Very tough spot for Chickeny. Again, I would guess there's a couple ties here, but I think it's pretty hard to play. Um, so I brought up the solver. Let's see what move is played, and then we'll look at that. Um, he goes in five. Now, Cypher still dominates the right. Cypher completely dominates the right. So 9, 4, 3, 9, and 9 is just so likely to be a win. It's 5, 5, you have three cards safe, and Cypher is doing damage. Cypher is doing a lot of damage. Anything in 8, you meet 4, 5, 4, 6, and 7, and you win. Anything in 1, you play 4, 5, 4, 6 in 8, and you win. And I think this is it. So let's, let's see what Mr. Solver has to say. Flip over. Um, how do I flip you over? There we go. So apparently half of Chickeny's moves we're losing on the spot here, which is a pretty strong starter. That is well above average. Chickeny went here, which is not a loss yet. Um, and Delhi had choices of how to take. This was one option. This gave Chickeny two ties. And this gave Chickeny one tie. Show me the tie. It was 7565 five, and 1. Alright, well, I feel good I found the right line because the critical thing I noticed was that 9439 nine here. Uh, sorry, that we're trying to get 971A to land in 8. So in this position, what was my idea? I had a good idea. I think it was to go 4. I think it was to go four. Yeah, this is the tying idea. And that was the only thing I found, so I'm really pleased that was actually the tying line. Yeah, Irania loses to five, yep. Yeah, really dangerous position. Delhi played this so well. Um, he goes here, and now Delhi has three different moves that win. Um, the seven idea does actually win here. The nine idea wins. And, wow, this wins? Okay, well, that's just weird. Let's get back to the game. Um, flip you back over. Delhi hasn't moved yet. Um, but this is certainly a tremendous position for him. He has picked up 4, 5, 4, 6. That card could reasonably go in 7 or 9, but only 7 is winning. 9 gives up Arania in 8, I think. I'm really pleased that I did I did find the one tying idea. I wasn't at all convinced it tied, but it was the only thing that looked like it kept anything together to me. And I, I saw one line to make it work, which is that sequence with one, five, four, and then Arania killing it on the bottom row. But that's very hard to play. And I don't know that I would have played it, right? I would I'm you know half watching and found one idea that I couldn't quite see how it lost, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't have convinced myself to play something else, or spent more time there and decided it was in fact losing due to something else, or this couldn't possibly work, right? Very tricky. I can be a little proud of myself. Yeah, Dolly's played this superbly. I would have gone in 9 there. I think 9 is much simpler. Um, but Delhi likes to keep cards that do things. And you'll note he sets up to control Arania in 9. So actually this is cleaner than it looked to me. Um, yeah, his cards just dominate. Beautifully set up. Really nicely played hand by Delhi. Continually finding ways to set up pluses. And from the second move of the game, the first of Chickeny's moves, we had this, um, this immediate issue of it was just... As soon as I started looking at moves, just looking at like what if 9439 lands in 9, which wasn't played, but just thinking about it, 
it became clear that having three of the same number side to side just really limited uh, limited um, the potential of the cards lining up right. Now this also may have been a first turn favorite set or something, but I think it was exacerbated uh, for two reasons. One is Chickeny's hand had limited potentials for plus, and two, Chickeny chose dynamic cards, right? He chose a 987 rather than a 99, which is slightly more dynamic, slightly lower pure power, though very close to pure power. But where Delhi has an 88, Chickeny had a 7565. Again, something looking to take advantage of plus walls. Where Delhi had a 2365, Chickeny had a 3444. Again, something looking to take advantage of plus walls. But the thing about having plus wall potential is if it lines up right, you have it really well covered. If it doesn't, those cards can't necessarily then be repurposed to do something else. And I think the three, I think so, I think what happened was we saw a slightly lower power hand trading in power for dynamism, but the dynamism wasn't actually that dynamic. It did line up for some plus walls. You know, it covered eights and nines going up and down, which actually was quite relevant in a bunch of lines. But it did not cover, if there's something it can't already take, does it have tools to deal with it? And it had some directional weakness, which Delhi found a very creative way to go after. So honestly, I think, I think what we just saw here was a masterpiece of aggressive sides from Delhi. And... Yeah, so that's focusing on... You know, I, again, I think Chickeny's played really, really, really well recently. I've been really impressed looking at his... Honestly, I'm always really impressed by his games. I think this was a really tough spot. We clearly were thinking the same things throughout this game. Like, my ideas were to go in three or seven, and he went three. Um, and I was trying to figure out a way to go three without putting one, seven, eight, nine there, and he found one, and it was non-losing. But Delhi found the response that applied clearly the most pressure, was very strong, and just really hard to find Chickeny's way out there. Very difficult game. From Delhi's perspective, uh, played a really strong starter that took advantage of Chickeny's directional weaknesses in a very unconventional way, and then played here. So I have to go, um, but I think this, this gave sufficient coverage to the game. Uh, if something wild now happens, okay, we didn't see it, I'm sorry, but... Uh, Really interesting game. Hope you enjoyed it. First time I've recorded a Triple Triad in a while, so um, I hope my commentary was decently sharp. Yeah. Good game.